quiz number one is linear motion. Now we have got a lecture on all of this stuff, which you should have watched before we did the quiz, obviously. Um, but out of that lecture, there's two things you really need to remember, and it's pretty uh, simple procedure for doing all the questions. This is the situation. We have four equations. Here's all four equations. And they have sets of variables. Each equation has four variables in it, and all together we have five variables. The five variables are um, V, V0, which is initial velocity, um, displ uh, displacement, which is S, acceleration A, and time T. All right, but normally we put them in order, we put displacement first. So V, V0, S, A, T, none of the equations has all five of them in it. In fact, every equation has one missing, which is not a bad way to pick the equations, actually, because this one has got no S in it. The second equation has got no V in it. The third equation has no T. And the fourth equation has no A. So what we do is we go through the question, we have a look what variables are in the question, and then from that we pick the right equation, or another way, quicker way, is to say which variable is not in the question, and then you'll spot it straight away. Then once we've picked our equation, let's say it's this one, then we come, we go and get the, um, well, if it's in the right direction, if you're after V1, you're fine, but if you're after A, you'll have to rearrange the equation to get uh, in terms of A. And that's it. You just keep using that procedure all the way through the, uh, the quiz. All right, so uh, not up to that yet, though. We're just um, going to do some general information about velocity, acceleration, time, etc. Over a certain time interval, the displacement of an object is always... Now, displacement means your actual uh, change of position. So if we started here at A, we ended up here at B, then our change of position is that distance. So how far do we go along X, how far do we go along Y, that would be your displacement in a straight line. That's displacement. However, if this was a road, a road map, for example, and uh, you, took a, you took a road from A to B, it's not the same thing, because you're very unlikely to have a dead straight road. So by traveling around on this road, you've eventually got to B. That's not your displacement, that's your distance. So we actually make a distinction between distance and displacement. Displacement is literally a dead straight line, or as the crow flies. Let's see there. <coughs> um, whereas um, this a uh, yeah, distance is how far you travel, and uh, so it's that's why it's greater than equal to the other distance. So you can work that one out. Pretty simple question. Now this uh, next question is a velocity versus time graph, very common graph because a velocity time graph gives you pretty much all the information that you need about an object's travel. Um, <clears throat> for example, in a velocity time graph, if the time graph is horizontal, then there has no acceleration. It's going at a constant speed. So this would be a typical graph for maybe a train. The train starts at the station, accelerates, gets up to A, then goes at a constant speed. Uh, for you know, Sydney trains, that's about 50 kilometers an hour. And then um, down, we decelerate again back down to C. Um, they used to do a 100 kilometer hour average back in the steam engine days. How's that? Eh? And now we go, what, a third of that speed? And finally finish at C. Now, there might be a couple of things we want to know there. For example, if we want to know the velocity, that's easy. If we want to know the acceleration, it's actually the slope. How steep is this line? So. Whatever slope we have here is the acceleration. So that's nice to know. Acceleration is the slope of that graph. That is the, the VT graph, velocity versus time graph. It's a long way behind. I don't know why it's so slow. Uh, I'm going to turn my video off. I think it will speed me up. That's acceleration. Now, the other one is displacement. Now, it turns out that displacement is the area under the graph. So if you want to know how far you've traveled while you're decelerating in here, don't spare that much. So the displacement S is the area of the VT graph. 
So basically, you can find out everything. Because remember, we're trying to find displacement. Well, that's area. Velocity and V0, where we can read that directly off the graph. Acceleration, that's the slope of the graph. And time, that's the length on the graph here. That's time here. That's time. So we can pick time easily enough. So one velocity time graph can tell you everything. Now, velocity time graph is not the only type of graph. In question three, we have three types of graphs. The velocity time one's the middle one. The bottom one's displacement time, the top one's acceleration time. And these graphs are matching the same object. So the object is slowly increasing, as you can see in the velocity time graph, which means the acceleration is a constant. So if the acceleration is constant, then velocity increases in, as a straight line. If velocity increases as a straight line, then displacement increases as a parabola. This is actually um, a parabolic or um, x squared graph uh, of displacement. So uh, <clears throat> now here it gets interesting. When we're talking about area and slope, it means different things. Now, go just go back to the VT graph again. Remember how I said the area was equal to the displacement. So that's one straight away. And the slope is the acceleration of a VT graph. But what about the other ones? What's the area of an acceleration graph? Well, it turns out, when you put the graphs in this order, that if you take the slope, you go up to the next graph. You take the area, you go down to the next graph. And slope in, uh, in maths is differentiation. That's a calculus term, differentiation. Pretty good. And the area is integration, which is the reverse of differentiation. Once again, that's another process you can do in calculus. Area is integration. So when you integrate, you go down to the next graph and when you differentiate you go up to the next graph we're not actually needing to use uh, calculus here though we, we're just saying that area goes down slope goes up so the slope of two is acceleration yes it is because it's the acceleration graph now the slope of acceleration is a change of acceleration which we don't even talk about it is it does have a name, it's actually called jerk, and that's how much your acceleration throws you around. So how much is your acceleration changing? <clears throat> uh, but area one, area of a acceleration is velocity. So that's velocity there. The slope of going down to the first one, the slope of the displacement will take you up to velocity. And the area of a displacement is useless. We can't, we don't know what that is. That's an integrated displacement. We don't use that. All right, so uh, which is on one of these is false. So one of those is not correct. Your job to find that. Um, now, this, as I said, these graphs are matching each other. So it is actually an object that's slowly accelerating. So you're looking for something slowly or uh, uniformly accelerating might be the best uh, way to put it. I don't know who that guy is there. He's, it's like a, one of those old guys pretending to be fit. But anyway, uh, a cyclist covers 43 kilometers in 56 minutes. So what is this, speed? All right, so we're using the word speed here because it's not necessarily a straight line. So um, it's just using the basic um, definitions of uh, linear motion, which is this, this bunch here. I'm going to grab these. <coughs> Okay, so from these basic definitions, we have velocity equals distance on time. So let's pretend he's going in a dead straight line. Then we're allowed to use velocity, not just speed, but we didn't use those terms here. However, the calculation is the same thing. So velocity equals change of distance over change of time. And if it's in meters per second, then we have to make sure that we're working in velocity equals meters per second second no oh, sped up a bit that's good so how many meters did they travel 43.3 so we're going to have to convert that over to meters so it's 43,300 meters divided by and the time has to be in seconds so we have to convert this 56 minutes
over to seconds. So 56 times 60, and we add another 16 seconds, so it gives us 3,376 seconds. Forty-three thousand three hundred divided by that seconds is twelve point eight two. Now I forget that's in meters per second. I'm going down to four there. Probably really should be staying with five, so eight two six there. If you want to be on the safe side? How about you use five significant figures? Four's um, only just making it for one percent. <clears throat> Twelve point eight six meters per second. What about what are our choices on the uh, on the answers there? Because we've got to make sure that this will comply with our units. So if we just go down to the question. We have now uh, we do have meters per second and we have kilometers per hour, so we could use either one. Let's just look at it that look at that in kilometers per hour just to. Uh, because we don't really know what meters per second are very well. Oh, I lost it. That's cool. 12, 12, um, to convert to uh, kilometers per hour, just times by 3.6. So um, uh, one meter per second is 3.6 kilometers per hour. So multiply that 12. So, um, into kilometers per hour, we get 46.174 kilometers per hour. I don't think that was our average, that's a bit more. So 40, 46.174 units kilometers per hour hopefully it does that otherwise come on we can do it get yep, one out of one let's check up here uh, in that little one out of one if the arrow tick doesn't come up the next question is car starts from rest accelerate la da da how fast are you going at the end so we're going to start using that um those equations, actually we've got them already sitting here, so let's have a look at what we've got and which equation we should use. So let's write down, let's switch to red here so it's really easy to see. Let's write down what letters we have in the question. You've got to, you've got to watch carefully because sometimes they're hiding. A car starts from rest, there's hiding straight away. It's starting from rest is a V0, so we have V0 hiding in there, even though there's no number written. V0 equals 0, we've got that already, 1. Accelerates at, so that's acceleration, 4 T seconds. How fast is it going in the end? We're looking for the final velocity, V. 1, 2, 3, 4. What's missing? S. There's no S here. So we're looking for the equation that has no S. Now, we already sorted that out before. It's the first one. There's the one with no S minus S. So uh, it's V equals v naught plus at that's the equation for this question you can't use any other equation because it has they have the wrong set of variables however we're lucky in this case because it's how fast going in v is the right setup for the equation so we can throw our numbers in it starts with a zero acceleration is 1.3 and it does that for 14 seconds and that's it At end point two meters per second. Oh, give me a green tick. It's a bit rough. All right, you gotta check up here. Yes, we've got one other one. All right, next question. So you notice how we did that? We go through the question, we look at the variables, and then we see which equation has that set of variables, same set of variables. 
that we were after. So I'm going to keep needing that um, that formula. Z, grab all of that one. Just going to steal this. I'm going to be using this all the time. You know what? Might as well post a few of them. Question seven: The maximum traverse speed of this route is da da da. Acceleration da. How much time will it take to get up to full speed? All right, here we go. Once again, exactly the same as we did the previous one. Find the variables. Maximum speed is so that's your final speed. Acceleration. How much time we're after the t? That's the question mark to get up to full speed. That's only three variables. What's going on? We're missing one. So sometimes you have to read into the question, think, okay, now, if we did a VT graph, what we're talking about is accelerating up to full speed. So how long did this take? That's the question. And that's glossy that way. So this is our acceleration period. So implied in the question is a V naught equals naught. So it's starting from rest, obviously. But uh, you actually have to imply that in the question. So how much time would it take? We end up, we haven't got S again, we end up with the same equation as we did before, V equals V0 plus AT. However, this time we're not after the V, we're after the T. T is the target. So we have to change this one around. So it's like T equals, so we have V minus V0 on this side equals AT. Now we divide by A, so T equals V minus V0 over A. Throw the numbers in, 740. Now, 740, be careful, that's millimetres per second. We should make it metres per second. So 0.74 metres per second minus nothing over the acceleration, which is in metres again, 2.8 metres per second. And that gives us 0.74 divided by 2.8. Point oh, so yeah, it's awfully quick, isn't it? Two six four. Doesn't take much time for that. I mean, this is a mach machine tool, so I would expect point oh two four, no, point oh two six four seconds. Out for significant figures, I've only got three there, so that's pushing it a bit. Uh, if you round that off to 0.26, you get that wrong. You get that question wrong. And that's in um, time, seconds. Mm, we got zero for that. Looks good, isn't it? So I'm calling on this for a second. What's going on? Yeah, we're dividing by 1,000. What do I do? Which is work by acceleration. Seven four divided by two point eight equals. Ah, we had an out by decimal place for some reason. That's weird. Okay, it wasn't O. There was no O there on that point O two six four. That was just point two six four. I thought it was an awfully quick time. All right, car, braking, deceleration, what's this deceleration? All right, so back to getting variables. So you notice we're going to do all of these ones the same way. This is our panic braking from, so that's actually the V0 this time. This is the initial velocity. This car stops, whoop, there's the word stops, that's V. 
final velocity is zero. In, there's my T, time. What was the deceleration? Looking for deceleration. Everything except displacement. There's no displacement in here. Guess what? Same equation again. Uh, v equals V naught. Plus KT. And we're trying to find the acceleration. That's the A. So that would be A equals V minus V naught divided by T this time. Almost the same. Except for the T. Throwing the numbers in. The initial velocity is A. Sorry, the final velocity is a zero this time, but back to front, minus initial, which was 78 kilometers an hour, we need to convert that one over. So 78 kilometers an hour converted to meters per second would be 78 divided by 3.6. So converting that into meters per second. We got 21.6. Six repeater meters per second. Over a time of 5.3 seconds. And that gives us a negative acceleration, which is correct because negative acceleration means that you're slowing down rather than speeding up. So it's between one divided by 5.3. 4.088 acceleration is meters per second squared so it's around about half a g so if you're slowing down that quickly um, you're getting half a g of force so half your body weight is pushing you forward 4.088 don't forget the negative sign here is it lost me Oh, I was editing now. Oh boy. Negative 4.088. And the units there is meters per second squared for acceleration. Good. All right. Interesting little question. This one going uphill and then coming back down. What's the average speed? So going up the hill at 18 kilometers an hour, coming back down. At a nice fresh 64, what's the average speed? Well, guess what? The average speed is not halfway in between because the problem is you spend more time at the 18, so that you can only do halfway if it's the same amount of time at each speed. So our average speed is actually going to be closer to the 18 than to the 64. Okay, anyway, do this is to work out what the time is and then work out average speed. So we actually have to split this into two questions. So it looks something like if you did a VT graph, basically split into two questions, work out the total time. So let's get the time it takes to go up the hill. So up the hill we've got, uh, we've got distance, um, average speed, so that's a V. And we're trying to find time. Now, this is not actually requiring requiring us to use one of these equations. We're just using the basic definition. So velocity equals distance on time. That's it. And we're just trying to find t. So time, put time over this side, and then put velocity on it. So time equals displacement over velocity. So going up the hill, this is this is for up, is distance, which is 3,400 meters, divided by our velocity, 18 kilometers an hour, let us take it converted over to meters per second. So 18 divided by 3.6. is five meters per second. So now we have uh, 3,400 divided by five, 680 seconds. T 
to get up the hill. Now we're coming down. Everything works the same. Time equals displacement over velocity, but our velocity this time is 64 kilometers an hour. Converting that one over, we have 64 divided by 3.6, which gives us 17.7, and that's now meters per second. So the same distance, 3400. This time we're going a lot faster, 17.77. So it took uh, 191.25 seconds. This one was um, 680.5. Right, total time. So now we do total. So total time, so we're trying to work out the velocity. Velocity equals distance on time. And this is for, this is for down. And this is total. Distance is now 3.4 doubled, so 68, 6,800 meters divided by total time, which was our 680.5 plus 191.4, which gives us 191 plus 680.5 and 6800 so 7.8 meters per second, uh, which is in, let's just switch that over two kilometers an hour just so we get a feel for where the average actually sits. There it is at 28 kilometers per hour. So we went up at 18, went, went down at 64, and our average is 28. So it's 10 k's higher above the 18. So certainly under halfway. 7.8. 7.8 meters per second is the units. Take that. That's um that's narrow neck, I think. That photo. Car was traveling 65, it sped up to 80. What was the acceleration? Fairly easy question. Next one. Using those equations again, still on the screen. Car's traveling at 65, right? So that's a V naught. It sped up to 80, so that's your final velocity. There's your time. What was the acceleration? A. So that's going to be A equals V minus V naught over T. I think you can do that one. The next question, panic braking. It stops in 5.4. What's the braking distance? Right, now we've got an S. Haven't had one of those yet, so, well, not much. 75 kilometers an hour, that's your um, initial velocity, and it stops. There's our final velocity in T seconds. So everything except A, the equation, that has no A in it. And I'll copy that formula. Box over from here. Right, which 
which one are we using? The one that has no A. So the one with no A is um, the last one there. S equals a half, V not plus V, 1, T. Now V1 is final velocity, so I've been writing V, well that's V1. Yeah, so we have this equation, S equals a half of V0 plus V, lots of T. What are we trying to find? Breaking distance S, it's around the right way already. Good stuff, we can put our numbers straight in. A half lots of V, 75 kilometers an hour, to convert that over, 75 divided by 3.6. Twenty point eight three. So V naught is twenty eight three three. Final velocity is zero and the time is five point four. This is how much ground do we cover in this amount of time? No, so this 28.3 times 5.4 equals and divided by 2. 56.25 meters. So you know when they do those ads, you know if it takes you uh, a fraction of a second to get to the brake pedal, you've covered so many meters. Well, they're just using this equation. Now I better check that. 52.25, see how we went here. Two point two five, and the distance is in meters. We got zero. That's good, isn't it? What did we get zero? Fifty-two point two five. Fifty-six point two five. Where get the two from? So I've made two mistakes and they've been, both been transcribing errors. I've made no mistakes, just can't write. Maximum speed, acceleration, what distance does it take? Similar to the previous question, only this time we're working out the distance. You know what we're actually doing here? In a graph, traverse, speed, acceleration, da da da. So it's the same as before, it's going up like a triangle in our VT graph. Here's velocity goes up to a maximum speed of 750 or 0.75 meters per second here. All right, it's accelerating, that's the slope of the line. And when it says, what's the distance? You know what it's actually asking? It's actually asking, what is the area in that graph? All right, we've got our time here. Now, if you want the area of a triangle, right? You've got the velocity, you've got the height of it. It's actually a half of the velocity times the time, right? But if it had already had velocity to start with, then we'd have to take that velocity off to take that rectangle off. So we'd have the, um, we'd have, well, sorry, we'd have to add that velocity to if it was uh, down here. So we'd have to add our two velocities together. And then we multiply by time. And we have to halve this bit because it is the, um, um, because it's triangle. If it's triangular shape, then the area is half. So guess what that is? That's the formula. That's the same formula as we just had listed over here. So it just comes from uh, working out the area of the triangle. Once again, we have no uh, final velocity, so we can chuck that bit, throw the numbers in, one half, final velocity, 0 0.75, times the time, oh, sorry, Beep. Acceleration. You know what? I just used the wrong formula. This is no good here because we're being told acceleration. What distance that is? What distance? We've got acceleration. We've got v and v naught. So the thing we don't have here is time. So this is the equation with no time. Which one's that? It's the third one. V squared equals v naught squared 
plus 2as. We're trying to find the distance, which is the s, so s equals v squared minus v naught squared all over 2a. Better say uh, wrong here. Wrong equation. Put the numbers in. V is our um, it's our final boss, isn't it? Yes, so 0 0.75 squared minus nothing divided by two lots of 2.4. One point seven five squared divided by two divided by two point four. One one seven one nine meters. So yeah, hundred millimeters. Probably should accelerate a lot quicker than that, shouldn't it? I hit the wrong unit. It was supposed to be meters. I hit meters per second. Sorry. Now that was a mouse. It wasn't even my fault. Next question is a conveyor. Everything's the same. Do the same trick. Sure, I did that right. No, I don't know. Seriously. All right. I'm now annoyed. Conveyor belt. S, V, V naught, A, T. Identify them in the question. A, acceleration. Now, what's this little G mean? It means uh, compared to gravity. So it's 0 0.31 lots of 9.81. So the acceleration will be 0 0.31 times G, 9.81. They give us 3.0411 meters per second squared. Not a six, that's a zero there. One down, that's acceleration. Maximum speed, that will be, reaches the maximum speed and continues for 12 seconds and decelerates. So, what is the total distance? Hmm, okay, this is an interesting one. Let's have a look at our VT graph again. And we did see this graph earlier. What's happening is it's accelerating, then it goes at constant speed, then it's decelerating. Guess what? We don't have an equation for that. These equations are all assuming a constant acceleration. So these are constant A. And if A is not a constant, you have to split it up. So we have to split into three questions. We have the start up, the constant, and the deceleration. And we have to solve each one of those separately. So we have to find S1, S2, and S3. 
So that's actually three questions in one. So <clears throat> for the first question, we have the acceleration, we have the velocity, we have V naught equals naught because we started from zero, of course. And that's it. We're trying to find total distance, so we want to find S for this section. What is S? So it's everything except the T, uh, which is the third equation. So uh, S, we're going to be using the equation around this way all the time. So X, S equals V1 squared. V1 squared minus V0 squared. Suppose I'm not calling it V1, I'm just calling it V. Fairly consistent. Um, over over 2a and this is for section one of the of the um, travel all right final velocity is 2.4 initial velocity is zero and two times acceleration is two lots of 3.0411 times that by 2, divide by 2.4, and flip it. So I've gone uh, 0.39459, 39459 meters for the acceleration. Now we're to the second stage, it's actually pretty easy one because it's constant velocity. In stage 2, since it's constant velocity, velocity equals distance on time. We're trying to find distance, so we just switch this equation around. Distance equals the velocity times time. And the velocity is 2.4. And the time is 12 seconds. So I'm clear the memory, stick that in it. Right, 2.4. Lots of 12, 28.8 meters. So we're certainly getting most of the travel at that point there. 28.8 meters. That's part two. And part three, which is the deceleration period. Uh, back to the same equation we were using before. S equals V, final velocity minus initial velocity, all squared over 2A. <coughs> Now, this is another acceleration we have to convert over. So we have 0.4, lots of g here, 0.81. 0.4 times, oops. 4 times g, meters per second squared. Now let's be careful here, we've got our um, initial velocity, our final velocity. Um, the initial velocity here is um, the same, the speed that we're going, which is 2.4. So it's 2.4 squared. And the final velocity this time is the zero. Oops. Final v squared final. So, so the initial velocity is the v squared. So again. So final velocity is zero. So zero squared minus initial velocity, which is the 2.4 squared. Looks like we're going to get a negative number, doesn't it? But don't panic, because this is a deceleration. So this acceleration is actually negative. So it's two lots of minus 3.9, 2.4. 
four. Nice. Is that 3.94 times 2? Alright, that would be negative, but I couldn't be bothered because there's a negative on top and bottom, they cancel each other out. So divide by 2.4 squared equals, and then flip it, 0.73, so 0 0.7339. Meters. Now it's a little bit uh, silly here. We've got um, you know five decimal places, and we're going down to microns or something here in uh, acceleration. But only 28.8 here. A bit rough there on that second one. Um, all right, add those three together. So there's our two a million decimal places for that third one. We're going to add the one that we had in memory, which is our first one, three nine. And we have to add 28.8 as well. Gives us 29.929. So add all those three together. 28.929 meters. Twenty-eight. Oh, 29.929. Yeah, I'm good. Make a mistake, no. 29.929 meters. Say, Photoshop here, I can do better than that. 29.929. Zero. Come. I couldn't have got that wrong. I did that really well. I really hate it when you go do all that mass and you don't even get it right. I mean, what a waste of time. I want my time back. That's when you go, ah, oh, stuff this. I'm going to use AutoCAD. I draw this graph up in AutoCAD and work out the area. Isn't that what that just told me to do? What is the total distance? That's the area under the graph. So if I draw my velocity time graph the same as this and use all the uh, numbers in here, then the area in there should be. So um, starting off with the constant uh, velocity section, just that rectangle. So that's 2.4 meters per second high, 12 seconds long. So it's just a rectangle. Uh, we can draw that pretty easily. So back in the AutoCAD. Uh, rectangle which is a length of 12 and a height of 2.4 right so there's constant velocity section now we're going to have an acceleration section which is going to be like a triangle like this which is part a but we need to get that that length along the bottom so and that's time the, the bottom axis is time we haven't calculated time yet so going back into this question again we need that time for that first section from, from one up to there, from one, that section one. So uh, we're just using the equation, velocity uh, equals distance on time, or no, sorry, we've got, we, we've got acceleration, haven't we? So acceleration is change of velocity over time, or V minus V naught over T. That's the definition. Now we don't have a V naught, so it's just V over T. And what are we trying to find? Time. So time equals, put time over that side, velocity over acceleration. So the velocity that we're getting to is the 2.4. And acceleration for the first section is this one down here, 3.0411. And so calculating that one out, we have 2.4 divided by 3.0411 gives us 0 0.78919 or 0.78919 seconds. Back into AutoCAD, that means the horizontal here is 0 0.78919, so 0 0.78919, enter, there's my line, and take that up to the corner, that's part one. Doing exactly the same thing for part two, which is our deceleration period. Go back into the second part 
of this question. Let's just get some space here. Same equation, so time equals velocity, or change of velocity, over acceleration. Now, the change of velocity is actually negative here, but so is the acceleration, so they cancel each other out, giving us a positive time. We'd be in trouble if we had a negative time, wouldn't we? All right, so velocity is the 2.4, no difference there. <clears throat> would be negative 2.4, but an acceleration is 3.9, which is technically negative 3.9, but anyway, 3.924, they're both negative. Maybe I should do that just to make it completely accurate. And the two negatives cancel out. So we have 2.4 divided by a slightly higher acceleration this time, 3.924, which gives us 0.616, a bit quicker. 6162, 0.4. 0.6962, is that correct? Let's double check. 6116. 611162. Yeah. 0.61162. Back into AutoCAD. Draw the straight line from here. The number of seconds is 0.61162. Enter. And then that takes you back to the top. Right. That's my velocity time graph. Time along the bottom, velocity along the top. What I'm trying to do here is measure the area. That will give me displacement. So go to the measured, click the four corners. One, two, three, click the fourth one. Okay. Now right click, no more. So just hit enter. And there it is. The area is 30.481. So yeah, we weren't correct. The area here should be 30.481, that's more than 1% out, and that is in meters. So that 29, something wrong there, it should be, oh, it's wrong. sorry about that, don't worry if we went wrong somewhere, the correct answer is here 30.481. 30 All right, so that's it for question 13. This time we're accelerating and decelerating. That's it. That's all we're doing. Accelerate, decelerate. It's accelerating at, so there's my acceleration, 7.6, so that's A. And don't forget, just like the previous question, this is two questions. First question, acceleration. Second question, deceleration. Now in this one, the acceleration and deceleration is the same acceleration so really when we do one we've done the other one as well <clears throat> how long will it take the start and stop distance is 19 mil so the entire area here is 19 mil what we can do here is we can cut the thing in half and say well let's just do the acceleration only and we know that that will be half of 19 so this is a distance of 9.5 so let's take s equal to 9.5 the acceleration equals 7.6 V0 is 0, All right, so that's three variables, which is what we need, and we're trying to find how long will it take, so we're trying to find T. Alright, so we need something that has everything except V in it. So V0, V, there is no such thing. It's decelerating. Well, we can do the B not one. We could do the second equation and the deceleration. Let's do that. This one here. <coughs> so we've got S equals V naught T plus a half A T squared. This is my start point. This is my finish point. So uh, we know V is zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, now V naught was our initial velocity, which was um, not V naught. So it's given another way. Sorry. Let's just do the first one, this one, from 1 to 2, 1 to 2, 
We know it is zero, so that cancels out. Uh, so we've got a half times acceleration 7.6 times time, which we don't know. And the distance is 9.5, but in meters it's 9.5 divided by 1,000. So the T that we're after is um, 2S over A square root. Two times net point O nine O nine five over seven point six. Square root a five. Now pretty quick. Hmm, good job we got that one too. Oh, that was silly. We're supposed to double all that. Because don't forget, I need half the question. So really, so back here we need to get that, and then we need to double it. So total time, sum of all the times, equals half. Double that. So it's more point one seconds. Car starts from rest. What's the loss at the end? That's a pretty standard one. Slope was the time taken. <clears throat> um, yeah, once again, uh, using those properties of area volume, uh, area is down and slope is up. Stone is dropped off a cliff, takes how many seconds? So, once again, it's still going to be uh, it's dropped off a cliff, takes t seconds to hit the ground, neglecting the resistance to the height of the cliff. Right, so it hides in there the fact that there's a V0 of zero and an acceleration of 9.81. So you'd have to work with it. You'd have to see that in your question to get the rest of your data. And what we're trying to find is S. So we've got S equals V0 T plus a half AT squared. There's no V0, so that's out. So it's just a half. Lots of 9.81 times 5.3. So you want to do this roughly on, off the top of your head when you're standing at a cliff. Um, it's a half of, and that's approximately 10. So really, it's just your time. Square it, and then times by 5, roughly. We'll give you the height of the cliff. So we've got 5.3 seconds. 5.3 squared times 9.81 divided by 2. 137.78 meters high. Yeah, it looks a bit right for that quick one. 137.78. We finally got one right. The projectile is shot, da da da. So, what the idea here is that um, you could solve this, but it's going to be a pain in the neck. Uh, we already have the formulas there for you in the um, linear motion. So, go to the linear motion chapter. Um, we talk spend a bit of time on those four formulas that we just showed you. We end up tabulating them there. Uh, so you can use them all the time. Talking about the graphs, which we've done. Uh, there's an example of a graph one. Then we start talking about free fall motion, which just did a cliff where acceleration is G. Then trajectories when you are 
not only going against gravity, but you're also traveling. And we have three equations here for trajectory flight, which is a parabolic flight. The time of flight, the maximum height reached in horizontal range. Now we'll be using those because these are part of any trajectory question. You just throw those, you're just basically throwing those numbers in. So here we are with those formulas. Let's pick the right one. Take a little bit of care though, because um, there's a little trick here with the sine squared versus the sine two theta. Which we, we'll see that when we, we start using those. Projectile is shot. What is the firing velocity needed to shoot a certain distance away? So we just um, look like we're waging war with, um, what do they call it? Uluru, if that's the right name. It's probably 10 average on those, but. Um, now projectile is shot at 45 degrees, must land target 2.8. So we're going to use horizontal range, right? It's the last equation there. So the equation actually right is written as uh, horizontal range, we may just HR, horizontal range, equals, okay, now it's initial velocity squared sine 2 theta, which is actually the sine of, you've got to get the angle in times by 2. Theta divided all that, all that's divided by g. Okay, now it's shot at 45 degrees, so two of them is 90 degrees. Initial velocity is the one we're trying to find. Horizontal range we have, so we're going to rearrange this equation around. So v naught squared is sine two theta. Over g. And we also have to divide by horizontal range underneath there. And it's squared, so we have to take the square root of the whole thing to get rid of the square. All right, throw the numbers in. So it's the square root of sine 2 theta. Now, 2 theta is 90. Now, sine of 90 is actually 1, so that's going to be nice. Divided by. 1.81 v naught squared plus that thing. It just seems like an awfully no speed. Why does it say that? Oh, silly me. That's wrong. Hang on. I don't know how to do algebra. Let's leave the v naught on, on that side. We'll leave the v naught where it is and put everything else on the other side. So the v naught will be. HR and these flip so it's HR times G over sine 2 theta if it's V naught squared. So V naught V naught will just be now let's make that sine 2 theta which is two lots of 45 which is one so sine 90 sine of 90 is one so it's just basically the square root of G H R which is Nine point eight one times twenty eight hundred. Now take the square root. 165.73 meters per second. 165.73. Um, 
what's the firing angle, blah, 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 it'll be the same equation again. Arrow is shot, what height will it lose during its flight? Interesting little question, this one, because you can't use one of those um, equations for that. You just use, use the same equation for the next one, question 20, works the same way. Question 21, we're shooting an arrow, right? And, we, and as soon as you shoot it, so you're shooting it dead horizontal. As soon as you, the, the second that you shoot it, it's starting to get down. So it does that, it's sagging. And when it gets to the final target, it's dropped by a certain amount. Now, the way you solve this, in fact, the way those equations were created in the first place, is imagine if you were watching this from above. Right, so you watch the, the uh, I'll do this in, sorry, this isn't third angle projection, but if I watch the arrow from above, what do I see? I see the arrow travel along in a dead straight line. I don't see it dropping at all because I'm directly above. So that's the top view. And what is it actually doing? Constant speed. So it's a constant velocity. Assuming that the air is not slowing it down. And when I do the side view, what do I see? I see the arrow starts here and it drops down. It's getting lower and lower. So what I'm seeing from the side view is exactly the same as if I just dropped a rock off a cliff. So constant velocity from the top view, but accelerating or dropping like a stone from the front view. Right, now we're going to use that trick to work this out. So we've got a horizontal, horizontally, it's going 350 kilometers an hour and it's 111 meters away. So there's my velocity, this is my distance, and I'm working out time. So velocity equals distance on time. What am I trying to do? Time. So time equals distance over velocity which is um, 111 meters over, we go convert this one, 350 kilometers per hour divided by 3.6, we've got 100 meters per second, right? so 350 divided by 3.6, 97.22 meters per second. All right, so that's uh, here, 97.22 meters per second, and that gives us a time of 1 equals, flip it, 1.1417, 1.1417 seconds. Right, that's how long the arrow takes to hit the target. So when we're looking for the top view, we start the stopwatch here, and hit the stopwatch there, it's done it in 1.14 seconds, but the same with the front view. It's also done this in 1.14 seconds. So I actually know the time for this one, which was 1.1417 seconds. Great. I also know the initial velocity from the front view is a zero because it's like I'm dropping a rock. Okay, just ignore the fact it's coming straight for you at 350 miles an hour, but Maybe we're behind the arrow, that might be a bit better. Uh, but it's dropping from zero meters per second. And how fast is it dropping anyway? Well, that's the acceleration due to gravity. A equals 9.81 meters per second squared, see? So what we're doing here is we're setting up a dropping an object off a cliff equation, ignoring the fact that it's going forwards at 350 kilometers an hour. It's still dropping anyway. Nothing you can do about it. And what are we trying to find? The height that it loses, S. And if we get the S from here, we've done the question. So we need an equation that has um, anything but the V in it, which was the S equals UT plus a half AT squared, that one, or S equals V naught T. I'd rather call it U, it's much quicker if it's time. Plus a half AT squared. There's no V0 in it because V0 is zero. So S equals a half AT squared. Nice easy equation. One half times 9.81 times 1.1417 squared. 
is my time. Square it times 9.81 divided by 2 equals 6.394 meters. Horizontal is going to drop 6 meters. Um, that's uh, quite a bit, isn't it? That's why you have to point it up a bit to take account for how much that you lose. Let's see how we went with that question. Here. And the very last question in the quiz is a one way you could measure the acceleration due to gravity. So here we have a tube which is got a vacuum in it, so there's no air resistance. And we're dropping a ball through that distance three meters long. So there's our distance, there's S. We're starting off with our V0. We assume that the ball's technically supposed to be right there. So V0 is a zero. And the time um, that it took was 782 milliseconds, uh, which is T. All right, now, in fact, this question that might be the last one looks fancy, but it's actually a super easy one because we just have that and we have three meters S. So V0, S, T, something else, acceleration. So we're trying to find A. <clears throat> so it's once again the same equation. S equals V0, T plus a half A, T squared. Getting used to this one. No V0. Once again, the first term cancels out. Uh, but we're trying to find A, so we rearrange this equation. The acceleration on that side, we've got S over here. A half becomes 2s, t squared, we're dividing by t squared there, equals a. All right, so a, put the numbers in, equals two lots of dis distance, which is three meters, that's just a three, divided by t squared, which is 0 0.782 squared, which gives us, let's see how close we get to, uh, the real number. Now these are random numbers, don't forget, so we might be on the moon, but let's see here we go. Three times two is six divided by uh, 0.782 squared. It should be able to handle that because the square has ordered operations. There shouldn't be brackets there. Hit equals, we get nine point, it's not bad, but maybe we are on planet Earth. 9.8195. Meters per second squared. There's one way you could measure gravity. Gee, you could probably have gotten away with that one just by typing the standard number in, eh? Don't try that at home. Meters per second squared. Check. Look at that, one out of one. And that is pretty good timing, considering that's the end.